It's been just over a year since we saw an Oculus Rift on our teardown table. Back then, we were thrilled with the repairability of the device, giving it a 9 out of 10 on the repairability scale. But we were slightly disappointed using it. The images seemed pixelated and hard to focus on, and the Rift had a tendency to make those susceptible to motion sickness have a good portion of their day ruined after wearing it for a few minutes. Well, even with our disappointments, we're huge fans of the potential of this virtual reality device. And we're more than excited to have a second generation developer unit in our hands. So let's tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we take a look inside the brand new Oculus Rift Dev Kit 2. Keep in mind this device is a developer's unit and many things may change before it hits retail, but we love the technology and couldn't wait that long to get a peek at what makes this thing tick. First, we check out the many pieces that come with our dev kit, including cables, adapters, a positional tracker, two different size lenses, and the headset itself with more cables. The most notable difference in the gear is the inclusion of this brand new proximity sensor. This is a custom-made IR camera that is specially designed to work with the new development kit. If you're hoping to add this with your old Oculus, you're out of luck. Just like the previous version, the Oculus Rift retains its 360-degree orientation tracking with no camera needed. But this new version also offers the addition of position tracking that requires being in front of the camera's view. Turning our attention to the headset, we note that while smaller than the first revision, the Oculus 2 weighs in at 453 grams, 58 grams heavier than the last version. We had heard that the Dev Kit 2 would implement the LED array seen in the Crystal Cove prototype at this year's CES. So with our development kit fully up and running, we broke out our IR camera to give us a peek at all the infrared light shining through the front of the headset. I'm sure we'll get a better look at these soon. Inspecting the headset for a way in, we took a peek under the front port cover where we found a spare USB port and a DC in power socket. The screws to get this thing apart were found on the other side, so all that stands in our way are a couple of Phillips Zero screws. Next up, we remove the interchangeable lenses. No tool needed for this one, just a little twisting and they're off. The Oculus Rift ships with two sets of lenses, allowing for some personal focus calibration. Once we remove the HDMI and mini USB cables, we're able to slide the eyewear out of the infrared LED hood. This case is packed with a ton of infrared LEDs, a ton being 40. And now we get our first look at the motherboard and all the goodies it holds. Chips of note on the board include the Invincence MP65 6-axis gyro and accelerometer, the Toshiba HDMI interface bridge, and the ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex M3 MCU, which has 128 kilobytes of flash and a 32 megahertz CPU. We found the display in a plastic backing and encased in a suspicious rubber case. A little peeling later and it's revealed that the display is actually the front panel off a Note 3. Literally. Display, cables, and yes, Oculus even left the touchscreen controller intact. So if you crack the screen of your Note 3 and you need a replacement, take a look inside your Oculus Rift. This is a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display that Oculus claims is capable of a 75 Hertz refresh rate and a 960 by 1080 resolution for each eye. This means that Oculus is overclocking the Note 3 display panel from its original 60 Hertz. Next up, we turn our attention to the positional tracker. The camera itself comes off the stand with just a snap. Removing the filter that allows only IR light into the sensor was easy enough, and then we were able to slide off the cover plate that hides the screws to get inside. All that's left of the positional tracker is a small board and a lens. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10, 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The Oculus Rift Dev Kit 2 got a 9 out of 10, and here's why. Standard Phillips Zero screws are used in both the headset and positional tracker, making it a cinch to open them. Cable management is much improved from the original development kit and the elimination of the control box makes for a simple, more streamlined device. And the use of a common smartphone as a display means the replacement parts are readily available. Keep in mind this is a preliminary score, given that the Rift is essentially a beta product. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.